far as students uh, who have in fact spent a harrowing time not just as far as their exams are concerned or even as far as getting the vaccines here in India are concerned now are faced with yet another hurdle. Now students are unsure about whether the vaccines will be enough when they travel abroad for their higher education. In fact, there are several reports coming in of students, particularly those going to the United States, being asked uh, to get yet another vaccine after their Covaxin or Sputnik vaccines that they have taken are not being accepted abroad. And this has raised questions not just for students, but even for professionals and others who wish to travel abroad in terms of the vaccines that are available here in India and what will be accepted when they travel abroad. All right, let's open this up and take this across to our guests who are joining us. Dr. Rajiv Das Gupta is with us. He's a member of the National Task Force. Uh, uh, Dr. Karav Kaol is a health expert joining us. But I first want to go across to Anushka Bansal, class 12 student who's got the Covaxin uh, vaccine. Anushka, uh, take us through what exactly is happening. What is the response that you have got uh, uh, as far as your future travel plans are concerned? Because I'm told that Covaxin as of now is not on the WHO list. And what will this involve for students such as you? Hi, right. So my name is Anushka and I received the Covaxin dose this uh, last month. And uh, one of the major problems we're facing is that because Covaxin is not recognized by the WHO, it is also not recognized by the universities. So one of the major problems is that when we receive Covaxin both doses and we travel to campus this fall, we will not be considered vaccinated over there. So we'll be uh, you know, we'll be asked to quarantine for almost two weeks. We'll be asked to get our re uh, tests done twice every week. And we might also be allowed to take uh, a different vaccine, which is uh, recognized by the WHO. So beyond just uh, the scare that is behind, uh, you know, being asked to take another dose of vaccine, it's also that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of concern for all of us because when I took the Covaxin dose, I was not aware that it won't be recognized by my university. And so, uh, you know, I only did that to keep myself safe. But to now know that it is a matter of concern on so many uh, different uh, avenues is, uh, you know, it's frustrating, but also very uh, stressful. All right, Dr. Rajiv Dasgupta, as a member of the National Trust Force, what would you like to tell students such as these who may have taken Covaxin, but, uh, you know, it could in fact impact on their prospects of travel abroad or perhaps the fact that they may have to take other vaccines when they travel. What really should they be doing at this point in time? Thank you. Um, on one hand, India has opposed this in the G7 preparatory meeting and, and India's position is quite clear that given the state of vaccine inequity across the world, uh, this is not a feasible option at this point. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the international rules, or at least the practice has been, that WHO pre-qualified vaccines have always been uh, valid for international travel. This is true for the yellow fever vaccine. This is true for uh, say the meningococcal vaccine, which is used for Hajj pilgrimage. The vaccines that are used and the certificates that are issued, which actually has uh, printed uh, the, the, the vaccine that's been used, is certainly pre-qualified. So while there is some merit in the basic principle, at this point it is, it is too early in the day perhaps uh, to, to, to invoke it. But then uh, this is a decision that the, or this is rather a conundrum, that the WHO at the global level uh, will have to sort it out for its member countries. But that's exactly the problem, isn't it? That at least the vaccine that this student has taken, Covaxin, is not recognized by the WHO. So the larger question is, what are we doing to make that happen so that those who have taken that so, vaccine after great difficulty and after getting, you know, there's a huge issue of availability also, at least those people, shouldn't they be prioritized, particularly those who have academic schedules to adhere to? No, the individual can't be prioritized. India has submitted the Covaxin documents uh, to the WHO. And as far as Covaxin goes, uh, India is awaiting uh, an approval from the WHO. 
All right, let me bring in Dr. Kanab Kahol on that note. Dr. Kahol, now what we are told is that several U.S. universities are saying that even after you've taken uh, two shots of maybe Covaxin or Sputnik, you would still have to take other vaccines such as Pfizer or Moderna. Now, while there have been certain tests conducted about taking a second shot of another vaccine, you know, how safe would that third shot in such a short span, uh, you know, one can only imagine because post the 1st of May is when 18 to 44 category has been opened up for vaccines here in India. How... Uh, safe is it really because that is also an issue of concern for students and their parents if their wards are to go abroad to study to take a third and a fourth shot of another vaccine in such a short span of time is it safe um thank you for having me on the show i don't think that's actually safe there's no study that has actually established that the mix and match approach works there were a few european nations that actually did look at the mix and match approach but that was with pfizer and covishield not something that's covishield and covaxin or covaxin followed by pfizer so these are all things that we have to really approach very scientifically and and one must actually acknowledge the fact that the biggest issue currently is that covaxin hasn't published its phase 3 data if covaxin does publish its phase 3 data in a reputed journal like lancet if it is peer reviewed um, if actually who gets all the all the material that is actually required for approval then this would not be an issue currently i think covaxin's done a fabulous job um, to actually be there, um, Harvard Biotech has made the uh, made the made a vaccine. It's probably clearly very very effective, but I think without data, uh, we will okay. always face problem. All right. Before I go back to Anushka, Dr. Das Gupta, would you like to address that question? Because Dr. Kaul has raised a very important question that why is this data not been out in a respected peer reviewed journal? Uh, that appears to be a big hurdle. Why haven't we crossed that one yet? Well, I can't uh, answer that, honestly, because I'm not part of the trial. Uh, but, but the argument that he made is absolutely correct. Uh, and I believe uh, what uh, India has submitted to WHO uh, would, would contain this data. But in principle, uh, what he pointed out is quite right. Okay, let me take this back to our student on the panel, Anushka Bansal. After hearing these responses, are you more concerned? Are you more reassured? And how really is this going to impact on your travel plans, Anushka? Right. So first of all, uh, yes, I totally agree. I think the first step to solving any problem is to first recognize it uh, as a problem, which uh, I'm, I'm so happy to see that our experts do. Uh, but at the same time, it does, you know, greatly affect my academic plans. And uh, that's because, you know, when I uh, travel to the campus this fall, I will, uh, you know, if, if the guidelines have not changed by then, then I would have to take a different vaccine, which is both scary and also a very uncertain, uh, you know, a very uncertain path to navigate. So while I do feel confident in everything uh, that our medical researchers and experts have been doing, I'm still uh, concerned by the timeline if those um, processes because uh, it does affect not just us as students but also the entire uh, you know academic and professional community uh, also i think that uh, in order to, i think the higher objective of vaccines was to normalize the whole situation and just to be able to go back to how things used to be and uh, you know if co-vaccine and sputnik they're not recognized internationally then it will be harder and harder uh, for us to go forward so i think that's all i have to say in this regard all right. Uh, we'll have to leave it there for the moment. Anushka Bansal, Dr. Rajiv Das Gupta and Dr. Kanav Kahol. Certainly, of course, a huge area of concern there for those students, for their parents and all those who are proposing to travel abroad. Will there be some kind of concerted action? Some states have come out and said that they will vaccinate these students. Uh, will there be due care taken that the students get the correct vaccine and within the correct time frame? Because even the time frame between the two vaccines is perhaps a little longer than students would like for them to make their academic schedules and their trips on time. Leaving it there for the moment, thanks so much for joining us on the News Hour Special Edition. The News Hour Special Edition.